Today on Inside the Issues, I speak with Mbatisi Ndadlana on a rising South Africa. Hello and welcome to this week's edition of Inside the Issues, a CG online podcast. I'm David Welch, CG Chair of Global Security at the Balsley School of International Affairs and Professor of Political Science at the University of Waterloo. And I'm uh, happy every week to welcome a guest here into the studios at the Center for International Governance Innovation to speak about some important issue of global governance or international public policy. And today, it's my pleasure to welcome the High Commissioner from the Republic of South Africa to Canada, uh, Mr. Mbatisi uh, Mdhadana. Welcome you. to CG and uh, welcome to Canada. You arrived uh, just last August and I apologize for the, uh, the cold temperatures. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you're climatized already. <laughs> uh, South Africa is a country that's increasingly in the news and that the world is increasingly paying attention to because I think people are beginning to realize that it's a country of uh, enormous potential, not only regionally uh, but globally. And so if it's all right with you, I'd like to get your thoughts as a South African on uh, where South Africa is now, where it's going to be in the future, and what kind of international and regional roles it will be, uh, be playing. But perhaps we could start with just your your understanding of where South Africa is now in its political trajectory and in its finding its own niche uh, in, in the region specifically, and then we'll move on to the global context, if that's all right. What's the state of South Africa today? <laughs> we are a, a very stable uh, democracy. We, we pride ourselves uh, of um, having a country that is, is peaceful with, with all uh, the, the challenges that all of us have in the world uh, on issues of the restlessness of our uh, populations. Um, in the SADC region, for instance, uh, we are one of the leaders. We are actually a, the, the glue that keeps uh, SADC uh, uh, together. We, have, we, we do not want to be a big brother. We want to be in partnerships because most of our investment um, is within our brothers and sisters, uh, SADC. So our neighbors are actually quite, quite important to us. But that's not the uh, only issue. We are now being told by a number of leaders in Africa that South Africa lead. Leads Africa. Lead Africa. Mm -hmm. And we, we uh, keep on uh, stepping back. No, we don't want, because we're new, we're a new kid in the blog and so on. They're telling us we don't want this thing that you are saying, that you're a new kid in the block. We want you to lead. And that is why we were probably one of the countries that was allowed to go to Libya, even during the time uh, there was that little uh, war there uh, in, in Libya. We were the ones who went to attempt to convince uh, Gaddafi to see the dust that uh, people are talking, recognize it, but unfortunately we were unable to persuade and convince him at the time. We are the ones who were saying to uh, the international uh, community, just back off, allow Africa to come with African uh, solution. Uh, that is why we're allowed to visit uh, that country. At the moment, we believe that uh, we are participating in peace operations in Africa. We are now able to deploy our soldiers. We have uh, soldiers in uh, a Central African Republic at the present moment. And as far as the economy is going, we're probably the, uh, the uh, biggest economy uh, in, uh, in, in Africa. And, but we don't want to brag about it because we depend mm -hmm. uh, to the people of the continent to grow that economy. And when other countries of the region uh, look at South Africa, and ask it to play more of a leadership role. What is it specifically that they point to when they say South Africa is a country that's particularly well positioned to lead? Is it its relative wealth, its uh, political stability? Is it its uh, um, resource base? Is it some combination of these, something else? It's a combination of a number of things. We were lucky in South Africa to have an icon. Nelson Holetlata Mandela. Mm -hmm. And every African leader would aspire to be like Mandela. 
a man who has been kept in jail for 27 years, and we would expect him to come out with gun blazing. But here comes this man out of jail, mm -hmm. and instead offered the hand of reconciliation, and even say to quite a number of us who were militants, and, uh, at, and at the time, he says we must come down and remember that uh, we need all our people in South Africa. He actually uh, drew us back to the Freedom Charter, which was just telling us in clear terms, drafted in 1955, that South Africa is big enough for all of us, black and white. And Mandela reminded us about his own speech when he was uh, 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 taken to, to prison at the Robben Island. That's the first thing. Everybody wants to emulate the example of Mandela. But over and above that, the fact is we were lucky in South Africa because we found a country that was well developed. But we have decided, as at the time the African National Congress, that we do not want to make the same mistakes that some of our colleagues made when they got the freedom. And so people now are beginning to say you have been staying behind. We want to see you at the UN Security Council. We want to see you participating at the UN. I spent uh, 12 years as, a, as a one of uh, the members of the governing body in the International Labour Organization. Mm -hmm. And no other African minister was even contesting me at the time because all of them said we want South Africa to participate because we have one of the best labor law regime in, in South Africa because we do not want to emulate some of our, our colleagues. We allowed... Uh, people to draw to join trade unions freely. We allow freedom of association, freedom of religion, freedom of uh, movement, sexual orientation, and everybody was saying, Ooh, hoo, hoo, "Why are you coming with sexual orientation in a, in a, in South Africa?" We are stressing the freedom of choice. There are many countries today who also want to see this democracy of ours. I'm sure you you might be aware that uh, there was a period when the ANC recalled a president, mm -hmm. President uh, Tabombiki. Right. And we we're all crossing our fingers that this, there must be no blood on the floor. And indeed, there was no blood on the floor. Uh, Halima took over as, as the next president, and Halima handed over to President Zuma, and there was no blood on the floor. And many people want to emulate that example. South Africa, come and help us. On the issue of uh, uh, truth and reconciliation, and everybody says we can't believe that South Africa has a truth and reconciliation process, which was led by uh, uh, Bishop Tutu, right. and everybody now says to us, let those commissioners to come and and assist us. Uh, I remember the people in Burundi were also trying to launch a truth and reconciliation, and they asked South Africa to help them to establish. They went to South Africa. They also wanted an electoral commission, an uh, independent electoral commission. And they said, South Africa, help us to establish an independent electoral commission. There are many countries in Africa who want to emulate some of those, uh, that example. That's probably why they see us as, um, as, as the leader in Africa. In fact, they tell us, lead. Mm, very good. We'll be back again in a minute with the uh, High Commissioner from the Republic South Africa, Membatisi Mdadlana. You're watching or listening to Inside the Issues, the CG Online podcast. Look for us at cgonline.org, on Facebook, on Twitter, and on YouTube. Welcome back. So it's uh, without question, uh, Nelson Mandela's story is an amazing one, and I, yeah. I understand that the moral authority that that comes with that. But, but in addition to that, South Africa has, has been showcasing itself in very concrete terms. Uh, um, the World Cup was a, a spectacular oh, yeah. success, and while that's not necessarily something that has global governance uh, implications, <laughs> that, you know, Durban was the host of an important climate change event in yes, March. Yes. Uh, once again, will be a host to the BRICS countries uh, meeting. So South Africa is stepping up in, in the spotlight, um, playing a global role. 
Um, what's, what's the attitude of, of you, your government on the potential for South Africa to build from this? Um, and what kinds of roles do you think South Africa will be able to take on increasingly as time goes by? I don't think we, we have a choice now. Um, um, we have to participate in the global uh, 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 community. We have always uh, stepped back as one of the donors, and yet we've been do doing a lot of that work. In Burundi today, there is peace. And led by uh, President Mandela at the time, we sent our soldiers in Burundi. It was probably one of our first projects. And today, Burundi is still having that peace. Former President Tamombegi, today we have a, a Sudan and a South Sudan. And that is uh, the work of our former president, Tabombegi, who spent a lot of his time in that country. And even today, he is still the man on the ground on all the tensions that uh, nearly, they, there was nearly a war there. Mm -hmm. And we pushed him in. And today, we don't find that war between South Sudan and Sudan itself. We have sent part of our troops in, uh, in uh, CAR, uh, Central African uh, Republic. We have trained some of the, uh, the soldiers uh, in, uh, in, in Congo. We have assisted Mali. We have uh, pumped Mali in that uh, country. We are assisting quite a number of countries at this present time. And in fact, I think the time for us has come to recognize that uh, indeed we are participating uh, in the global economy and, and, and we need to recognize that um, after participating we can't step back. Right. And, and, and um, uh, besides the, the, the fact that uh, uh, President Nelson Mandela has, is this uh, uh, icon in, in South Africa, we ourselves now, I think, we are determined that we're going to participate in the global economy. We are now members of ECOSOC uh, at the UN. We have been members of uh, the, the Security uh, Council, and we are participating uh, quite actively in the United uh, Nations. We are also participating in the African uh, Union, and I'm sure that uh, you know that we, do not, we did not take a former minister to contest the chairmanship of uh, the AU. Mm -hmm. We took a serving minister. We sacrificed one of our best women leaders in South Africa, a member of the National Executive Committee of the ruling party, but also one of our best uh, cadres, one of our best ministers. We sacrificed uh, her in order to go and lead as the AU chairperson. We did not take a, a reject, as uh, sometimes other people do for someone who's looking for a job, put him at, as an AU chairperson because we don't want them in their country. That's not the stance we took in South Africa. We give the AU the best. Now, is the AU sort of the organization that South Africa looks to uh, through which to make its biggest mark? Uh, regional governance of Africa is where South Africa sees its primary international role? Because in the alternative people talk about outside, well, certainly in North America, is the BRICS, uh, which is a, a global configuration of, uh, of growing countries, countries growing in importance. But the AU and BRICS are two quite different fora. You, you're quite right. There are, there are two different uh, uh, forums indeed. The African Union, at the time it was the Organization of African Unity, right. participated in, our, in, our, in achieving the freedom that we have today. And we respect the African Union. Mm -hmm. And so we would want to participate in the African Union fully. We think now we have matured. Uh, at some stage, we, we took a step back. We didn't want to, to, to challenge for leadership positions. We think that we have matured. We must participate in the leadership positions. We want to implement part of the key democratic principles that uh, we have 
tested, tried and tested in South Africa so that we can influence Africa. Some of us are sick and tired of um, instability in Africa. We're sick and tired of wars. We, we should not uh, put in the heads of our people that we are cursed as Africans. There's always war, there's always blood on the floor. We, we are meant and born to be poor and our children say we are born uh, to, be, to have no work, nothing to do. Uh, we, we should not portray ourselves in that way. That's what we want to take to, uh, to, to Africa, that we must be proud to be Africans, mm -hmm. and therefore we must not disgrace ourselves by, by fighting among ourselves. Our, our leaders must learn. If they participate in the elections voluntarily, they contest in an election. If you lose, learn to accept defeat. Very good. Graciously. Very good. We'll be back once again with the High Commissioner from the Republic of South Africa, Mr. Membatasi uh, Imdadlana. Uh, you're watching or listening to Inside the Issues, a CG Online podcast. Look for us at cgonline.org, on Facebook, on Twitter, and on YouTube. Welcome back. So in our time uh, remaining, limited time remaining, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, two things I'd like to ask you about. One is, uh, what would South Africa like to accomplish at the upcoming BRICS meeting in, uh, in Durban? And, and secondly, I'd like to talk a little bit about Canada and South Africa and how you see that relationship developing. We, we are very um, uh, happy that uh, the BRICS has agreed that uh, South Africa uh, should host because uh, in, um, in, uh, in uh, March we'll be hosting BRICS in, in South Africa. And we're very proud that we are members of uh, uh, BRICS. Um, we, one of the things that we would want to, to win in that discussion is this issue of the BRICS bank. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, uh, we, we can proudly host uh, the bank in, uh, in South Africa because it fits with our own development objectives now. Previously, we had African Renaissance Fund, and that African Renaissance Fund has uh, helped us to assist the Malian government, for instance, to revive Timbuktu, mm -hmm. uh, especially around those books there, that history mm -hmm. that is there in, uh, in, in, in Mali. That Renaissance Fund has assisted us in um, uh, participating in, in, in a number of uh, elections in, uh, in, uh, in the continent where we, we had um, assisted others to print even uh, the, ballot, the ballot papers, but also sending observers in those countries, in some, even our own security forces, our police, to go and train their own police forces. And we, we pride ourselves of, um, of, um, of uh, that. So participation in BRICS is assisting us to work with countries like China, one of the, uh, the, the biggest economies by a developing country, mm -hmm. uh, China, and uh, countries like uh, Brazil, uh, Russia, and uh, India. And we, we are very proud to be part of that, uh, of, uh, of that crowd. There, there are, we are a leader in a number of areas in that crowd. Uh, it's, it's the best place to do business. Where is it? South Africa, that's, that's the place to be if you want to go and do business. Even better than these other countries, the hustle factor in South Africa is not as big as it is in these other countries that I have mentioned. So if we can get uh, that BRICS bank right, we will be very, very happy uh, in, in, in South Africa. And are you optimistic that that will happen? I am very optimistic um, because uh, we, we have the support, uh, for instance, of, uh, of China. And uh, China is actually more excited about uh, this bank. Um, that is why we are developing a, a different one, which is, uh, we call it a development uh, a, 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 a wing of ourselves, SATPA, in South Africa. Hence, we are discussing with uh, the SIDA uh, here in, in, in Canada. And that is why, that is why one of the tasks that I was given is to strengthen uh, relations between the people of South Africa mm -hmm. and the people of Canada. 
this country, Canada, we, even today, if you can go to ordinary South Africans in the townships and say Canada, they will remember it by assisting them to achieve the freedom and the democracy that they have. Because it is Canada that was funding some of the lawyers who were defending our people when they were detained and arrested in South Africa. Mm -hmm. It is Canada that assisted us to draft the current constitution. We're the most liberal constitution in South Africa. We're assisted by Canada. In fact, one of your premiers, Alison Redford, mm -hmm. uh, participated in that process with a group of, uh, of lawyers in, uh, in, in South Africa. Um, and therefore, the people of South Africa are very proud of uh, Canadians. And we would want Canadians to now understand that in South Africa, it is time that we better the lives of our people. It is time that we develop our people. It is time that now we build those schools that at some stage we were seeing as centers of uh, apartheid and we're burning them down. And now we want Canada to assist us to rebuild those schools and rebuild South Africa. Because some of the Canadians were enjoying, if tear gas is enjoyed uh, with us in South Africa, now it is time that will remove tears on our eyes and roll up our sleeve, sleeves and touch those South Africans and become dirty and roll up our sleeves and participate in the development of, uh, of South Africa. So that's the task I'm given to convince Canadians that we love you and therefore love us back. Well, good luck. I hope that works well. And I'm, I'm sure actually you'll have a very receptive audience uh, because Canadians do have a very fond connection to South Africa, a very oh, yeah. long historical one through the Commonwealth. And, and you're quite right, some of the Canadian leaders were in the forefront of the fight against apartheid, uh, yeah. both uh, John Diefenbaker and Brian Mulroney. So, so good luck with the task. I'm, I'm sure it'll be a pleasant one. And uh, I'm sorry your schedule is so tight. I'd love to have you here for, for a much longer time. There's much more to talk about, of course, but we appreciate it. Thank you for coming in and helping us understand South Africa better. And uh, to the viewers, thank you for joining us again. Uh, join us again next week for another episode of Inside the Issues, a CG Online podcast. Look for us at cgonline.org, on Facebook, on Twitter, and on YouTube.